Good morning and welcome to St. James. I'm Becky Jones, the Rector. Today is August 30th, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, and our 25th Sunday of meeting and worshiping remotely. My, how time flies, hmm? Today I'm out here in our garden. You know, the White House isn't the only place whose rose garden has gotten a facelift this summer. John McCormick has spent countless hours out here pruning, watering, digging. He's not quite done yet, but the place looks fantastic. I'm grateful to him and to all our other gardeners, to Kathy Lehman and Susan Clemens, and all the folks who've offered their time in the summer heat to keep our church beautiful, even if most folks don't get to see it. There's something very sacramental about that. Right now, let me invite you to join with me in enjoying some of the beauty of our garden as we prepare for worship. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's now join with our choir in singing, If Thou But Trust in God to Guide Thee. Confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Wali. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Wali. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and will be forever. Amen. Wali. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Please join me in reading the psalm for today. Read responsively by half verse. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now, and will be forever. Amen. Wale. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your for- forbearance, Do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you but they shall not prevail, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here ends the lesson. Oh, my God.
reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, do not claim to be wiser than you are, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repair, repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the lesson.
Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Here ends the lesson. Holy Spirit, come. Give life to my words. Touch each of our hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A friend of mine posted this on her Facebook page recently. Eight warning signs that you are mentally and emotionally exhausted. One, you're easily irritated. Two, you feel completely unmotivated, even to do things you normally enjoy. Three, you're, ha you're experiencing anxiety or panic attacks. Four, you're having trouble sleeping. Five, you have almost no patience and find yourself being short with colleagues and family. Six, you're experiencing indigestion, like a low-grade stomach ache all the time. Seven, you start crying unexpectedly. Eight, you feel detached, going through your days without really emotionally connecting to anything. You feel empty. Yes, 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 potentially, and yes. And I would add one, number nine, that you just can't seem to start or finish tasks in a timely manner. I would have added that. I, I just never got around to it. Yes, in these days of endless pandemic, exacerbated by endless political ads, grief over the devastation wrought by hurricanes and wildfires, and profound despair at watching our nation slide into chaos. I have developed many problems I never had before. I've become a procrastinator, a grouch, a worrier, or I would worry if worrying didn't take so much effort. Sometimes I cringe when I open my email account and see just how many unanswered emails are in there and how long it's going to take me to do a mass delete, and how I hope I don't actually delete something important, but secretly hoping that maybe I will, and then if the important email goes missing, then I won't have to deal with it. Whoa! Who is this person that I have become? I'm going to guess that I am not entirely alone in feeling like these past few months have been impossibly exhausting. I want to pull myself out of this mental and emotional fog and get back to being who I was, only a better, more empathetic, more genuinely loving version of, of who I was, of who I know I can be. Sometimes I, I think I just need a good kick in the butt, a reminder to snap out of it and start being my best self. And so to that I say, Hello, Jeremiah. Hello, Paul. You two are just who I needed to hear from this week. Let's start with Jeremiah, the perpetual gloomy Gus of the Old Testament. Nothing much ever suits Jeremiah. He's got a long list of complaints about his lot in life, not unjustifiably. Jeremiah's life got turned upside down repeatedly. I can relate to Jeremiah's longing for missing out on time spent with merrymakers, with his 
weariness at the prospect of another day spent alone. He wants to know why the pain is so unceasing, why things aren't getting better by now. Jeremiah, I so understand where you're coming from. But you know what? Grouchy as I may be some days, I have never had the temerity to turn to God as Jeremiah did and say, truly you are like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. I may have had some angry words for God in the past, but I've never questioned God's truthfulness. But God doesn't get angry with Jeremiah. That's the thing about God. Our anger doesn't put God off. Instead, God simply summons Jeremiah back. If Jeremiah can just tear his gaze away from his own self-pity and once again focus on the mission God has for him in the world, then everything will be okay. Their relationship can continue. God will give Jeremiah the words he needs to be a good prophet Jeremiah will find comfort in God. There is no suggestion that Jeremiah should have kept his thoughts to himself, denying what he felt. No, God allows Jeremiah to speak his peace, to let it all out, and then to go back to work. Jeremiah just needed to get it out of his system. God let him do that. God's promise to Jeremiah it's the same promise all believers down through the centuries have enjoyed. And it has helped them to survive pandemics, wars, natural disasters, economic catastrophes, and all manner of soul-draining situations. If you turn back, I will take you back, God says. And I will make you a fortified wall of bronze. Whatever's eating you right now, will not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you." And somehow that self-centered focus that has trapped us in a downward spiral of anxiety and mental exhaustion gets replaced by a God-centered focus that not only lets us get through one more day, but helps us to sense God's presence in the struggle, maybe even starts to bring out the best in us again. And this is where Paul enters the story. Paul's words today were the words he wrote to this new church that had just recently been planted in Rome. They were a young community still just learning how to live together. They were already starting to experience some problems, some conflict and some challenges as they fashioned this new life together. They wanted to be a community of hospitality and grace, but life was so hard. Sometimes folks got grouchy and anxious and detached, just like us today. Lately, in our Tuesday and Thursday weekday morning prayer services, instead of reading the appointed lessons from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which is the translation most often used in the Episcopal Church. Instead, we've been reading from Eugene Peterson's The Message. I commend it to you. It's a wonderfully approachable translation, and I think today's reading from Paul is especially good as found in that version. Quote, Love from the center of who you are, Paul advises. Don't fake it. and Don't burn out. He continues, keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Don't quit in hard times. Just pray all the harder. Help the needy. Be inventive in hospitality. Finally, Paul says, discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I think these instructions about loving from our center, about finding beauty in everyone, are at the heart of Paul's hopes for the early church in Rome and for us today. Because if we do that, we almost certainly lead to 
to being generous and hospitable, forgiving and peaceful, humble and kind, full of grace, not grouchy, not anxious, not unmotivated or procrastinating, not emotionally and mentally exhausted. You know 2020 is not going to last forever. The pandemic will not last forever. Unbearably hot weather won't last forever. The November elections will be over in just a little over nine weeks. All this uncertainty and anxiety we may be experiencing now is not a permanent thing. But in the meantime, if the walls of our lives feel like they're crashing down, maybe God has a bit of renovation in mind, just like we've been renovating the garden. This could be an opportunity to refine ourselves and to make positive changes. God uses uncertainty in our lives to remodel our hearts. When we feel irritated, disconnected, lethargic, that could just be our heart asking to be remodeled into something more resilient, more beautiful. Maybe we're being made new. Maybe we're being opened up so that when life returns to normal, we'll more easily see the beauty all around us, the beauty in everyone, even those who are hard to love. Who is this person that I have become? I don't know yet. The chapter is still being written, but this much I do know. Whatever is eating us now will not prevail over us because God loves us no matter how grouchy we get, and God will never desert us. Amen. And now returning to our worship, let's say together the words of our faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Wally. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. The peace, peace of the, of the Lord, Lord be, be always, always with, with you. you. This is Susan. This is Kathy. And, and Saint, Saint Margarita. Wishing, wishing you the peace, peace of the Lord. Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Wally. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord of all power and might, 
the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Wali. God of all power and love, we give you thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Wally. God, you have promised always to be with us. In your name we pray, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That we may open our ears to the cries of those who suffer, freeing them from enslavement to poverty, abuse, and lack of opportunity, taking our share in the saving acts of God. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the nations may lead their people with integrity, honoring that which is worthy of honor, and forsaking those things that divide us and separate us from your will. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to lift up our crosses to the light of day, carrying them on our journey of faith, uniting ourselves with Christ in his passion, so as to share in the glory of his resurrection, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we be given the strength to leave behind the fruits of temptation, turning our gaze upon that which is nourishing and sound, living a life of love, honor, and respect for others, full of rejoicing and thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Jim Coomer and Mary Lou Soward, we pray especially for those who have died separated from family and loved ones because of coronavirus, that all may have a place in God's kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for our loved ones who are in need of strength or healing, including the Pallon family, Sandra and Roger, Jenna, Donnie and Lori, Brett, Mickey, Michael, Drew, Becca, Kyle, Jordan and Molly, Matt and Jenny, Mary, Vince, Kate, Chris, Ed and Tony, and Tom and Linda. We pray for those who are homebound, including Donna, Janice, Lenore, Betty, Maggie, Arlene, Hank and Olga, and Pat and those we name before you now. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Wali. Let's say together the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, 
our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Wali. Our closing hymn is Lift Up Your Heads. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.